Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge and welcome to Eldridge and Company. And welcome to Arlene Lopez, my guest today. I really don't know Arlene, but let me just spend a minute to tell you how I've invited her to this, this program. I'm a great admirer of the CUNY program that's called the Edward T. Rogowski Internship Program. It's a program that any student from any of the CUNY colleges can apply to. And if they're interested in public service, it offers them the opportunity to either work in a legislative office or to go up to the Albany to the state assembly or to go to Washington to another legislative office or to join, I think, a community organization. It's an invaluable program and it fits right into my mission to involve more people, especially young people, into public service. So Arlene, hello. Hi. <laughs> Arlene was, when I asked Tony for a suggestion, he's the head of the internship program. He suggested Arlene, and that I think is an amazing choice. Arlene, thank you for coming and thank you for doing everything that you've done. You're now still working, right? I am. Um, I'm working currently as a legislative assistant to New York State Assembly member uh, Mikhail Solage. I started with her at the beginning of October. Uh -huh. And, you know, I've, I'm with her even now through this whole quarantine coronavirus situation. You're working from home. Yes. And you worked for her when you were in the internship program. Yeah, um, that's how I, you know, first came uh, in contact with her when I started with the, uh, I think, Women's Public Service Internship Program. It's like a fall internship program. Um, it's part of the other general internship yeah. program. Yeah. yeah, and we had the option of either they choose for us uh, a New York State Assembly member or a New York State Senator, or we could ask request to be placed with one. So I asked to be placed with her specifically. Um, because she represented my district and when I read into her, I liked a lot of her policies and positions. When you went to Queens College? I did, yes. I graduated the end of 2018, so I guess I'm going to say that's been like a year and a half. <laughs> right. And did you go up to Albany with her? I never went up to Albany with her. I actually stayed in the district office. Mm -hmm. I did. I completed the Women's Public Service Internship Program, which ends like in December with the, the, the term. And then I ended up getting into the Caucus Scholars Program. So I just requested to continue with her. The district includes Hempstead and that part of Long Island, right? So I think this is a little confusing, but like um, it includes like Valley Stream, Elmont, um, Woodmere, Floral Park, parts of Franklin Square, and those parts, not all of them, but a lot of them are within the town of Hempstead. Uh -huh. And did you go to school there? I went to school in, um, I went to school in Uniondale. I went to Kellenberg Memorial High School. So tell me about your family. Are they interested in politics? No. <laughs> no. Um, Everyone in my family does something very different. My two parents, they're public school educators. Uh -huh. um, my father, he was uh, with uh, special education in Kings County Hospital. Mm. Um, and my mother ended up going to administration. So at some point she, be, she was yeah. a superintendent in the Bronx. But they vote, um, right? Of course they vote, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So how did you get interested in the politics? Um, it's actually kind of interesting. I didn't start out with politics. I started out as a pre-med major uh -huh. um, with neuroscience. And I kind of always had like a small like interest in politics. I think because I went to a Catholic school that had a lot of like conservative values, I think that it kind of made me question, you know, the, what I was learning from the day to day. So when I graduated and I kind of had, you know, the opportunity to, you know, digest my own information and kind of start challenging different notions that I had learned, different ideas. Um, when I when I was at Queens College after my after my first semester, I decided I would just take one political science course and just see how it goes. You know, just just why not? You know, um, and I ended up absolutely falling in love with the subject. <laughs> That is so exciting. <laughs> and yeah. we, I mean, it, it's so interesting to see where people come from and what, 
you know, what triggered that interest? It, it's uh, very great. So you joined the women, the women's caucus, and then you joined another caucus. Yes, um, that's for the uh, Black, Hispanic, Asian, Puerto Rican task force caucus. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was able to, you know, I wanted to stay, I wanted kind of a longer type of internship and because of that, I was able to stay with her, um, for the full year. And even at the end of the summer, she actually ended up hiring me for that summer, which oh, was great. Really nice, you know, it was yeah. like a nice, um, way to get some sort of professional experience when I was essentially just, you know, becoming a junior in college. Yeah. So what did you work in your senior year? No. Um, so after that, after I finished my internship with her and I worked with her over the summer, I ended up doing a study abroad. I was fortunate enough to have a public service award that covered it. Oh. Um, and so I was in Barcelona for a semester and because I still had my neuroscience major, I was doing different sorts of research. So I really didn't go back um, to the assembly woman um, until... <laughs> Now, finish my master's degree. Yeah. yeah. So then you went to the London School of Economics. I did. Yes. That's really quite a story. Did you, do? Are you in touch with any of the the teachers from your high school? I am actually. I am. Are, are they surprised at what you're doing? They're so they're so incredibly proud. One of my um, one of my old high school teachers asked me. Um, this is before the whole quarantine, but she would like me to go and speak to like her students like in, in she's a Spanish teacher. So in the Spanish club, I used to be vice president of Spanish club. So, you know, she, she wants me to go back and speak to them about like where I am and how I got here and just kind of explain my story kind of like I'm doing now with you. It's so amazing. So it, it's just a, so you went to the London School of Economics. What was that like? It was vastly different from anything I'd experience. Um, in How is it different? Class. The difference between that and Queens College, right? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, I don't even know where to begin. I guess like I could start with the students. The students there, you know, I know Queens College, CUNY, we get to call ourselves diverse and we are super diverse. And LSE can also call themselves super diverse, but I think for very, very different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at, I think at CUNY, for example, you tend to find students that come from all walks of life, that are all ages, um, you know, that all have all different ethnic and racial backgrounds, just have such very different life experiences. Where at LSC, what I encountered were students from every single country um, who spoke every language and like they had traveled like the world essentially by the time they were like 18. A lot of them, you know, they tended to be a lot more well off compared to, I think, a lot of the students you'd encounter at CUNY, mm -hmm. you know, which I think brings a question of accessibility. But um, I think to have, you know, that people from such different uh, places of the world, you know, some people in my classes, they were in Egypt uh, during the Arab Spring, you know, to be able to talk about that in class and seminars. You know, like that's that's firsthand experience. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and people also just have such different ideas and assumptions about the world um, that, you know, it's a child. It's, it's challenging to kind of be in that environment, you know, and for the first time, I think, really be challenged, not by just, say, your teachers giving you assignments, but by having them question, you know, having them question I think your like fundamental understanding um, of the way the world works have you kind of argue or you know academically debate your other peers who can hold up a put up a pretty good fight <laughs> so you, are you saying it was more competitive than than at Queens College absolutely we <laughs> for um for our grading system for example we had a formative and we had an assessment for a formative, it's kind of like an optional essay. You don't have to do it. You don't get any penalties if you don't. It's just one, you know, 2,000 or 4,000 word essay due in the middle of the semester, kind of like a midterm mm. that doesn't count towards your grade. And yet every single person submits that formative. Mm. So did you do it? Of course I did. <laughs> what did you do it on? Um, I think, you know, you have different formatives for different courses. Mm -hmm. um, so like for one of my courses, I took a revolutions course 
and I did it on the theory of Marxism um, and its application in you know the different revolutions that happened, such as in uh, the Soviet Union or in um, Vietnam or what was that last country that I had there? Oh, or Cuba. Um, and you know the the theory manifests very differently from you know, the actual like practical application of it. So I think it was definitely, and, and so essentially for my assessment, I just built on what I started with that formative. You know, I think that's why it's a good idea to do the formative, even if you don't get an actual grade on it. Right. And then is that where you met the person from the Arab Spring? Uh, yeah, that is actually. <laughs> yeah, there were, there were so many different people in that, in that course, in that seminar, I think there were 15 of us and not one of us were from the same country. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where else was it? Um, we had, like I said, we had Egypt, we had Turkey, we had France, of course, England, Spain. Um, we had, I'm trying to think of everyone there. Uh, oh, um, Japan, China, um, Malaysia. <laughs> an incredible, just and, an incredible experience. Right? Yeah. And when you come home, do you feel, are, do you have old friends and you still can go back to those old relationships? I think it's funny. My closest friends are my friends from high school. We, oh, they we, are? Okay. Yeah, we just, we, we clicked and we never let go. My friends are actually almost like me. My yeah. best friend, while I was in London, she was studying in Barcelona. Doing oh, great. That's so, so great, yeah. Oh, I was just saying, I think, you know, people, you know, who... My mom always says, tell me who your friends are, I'll tell you who you are. My friends are like me in the sense that, yeah, maybe we're traveling and going different places and doing a lot of things, but I think maybe that's what, like, what, what keeps us together. Yeah. It sounds like it must have been a wonderful high school. <laughs> it you wasn't know? anything too different. It was oh, yeah. Okay. And when you, um, where did you live when you were in London? I, I got lucky. I ended up, um, I was able to live in Covent Garden, which is like, I know, like, Oh, wonderful. Yeah, but I, I got lucky. I just ended up finding, I was able to share my apartment um, with my partner at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, it was, we were able to split the rent and it turned out cheaper than like the residence halls. Fabulous. Yeah. So now you're back working in the office, right? Yes. You're doing the legislature. You're doing a lot of writing there? You're writing? Doing, yes. I are, tend to are you in charge of communications? Is that basically what it is? Um, I wouldn't say I'm in charge of communications, but anything communications goes through me, you yeah. know? Um, so yeah. Yeah. Right. And let's talk about where you're going to go soon. <laughs> where, what is your next step? Um, I'm going to be going to law school. Yeah. Um, this fall and I'm, I've committed to Harvard. So that's right. <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> when you were younger, did you ever think you were going to do these things? No, I, I can honestly say no. I, I mean, it's like Harvard, you know, it's like a fantasy almost, you know, you wish you could get in there. Yeah. Um, and I don't think when I was younger, I don't think I really knew what I wanted. You know, I, don't, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I got into pre-med because my sister, she's currently in med school and that was inspirational for me and I look up to her a lot. Right. Um, but, you know, after like, realizing I didn't enjoy anything that I was doing there. I didn't enjoy my volunteer work. I didn't enjoy my courses. I didn't enjoy anything. Um, I think it kind of, during college was like a really formative time for me to start exploring what it is that I do enjoy and what I care about and what I'm passionate about. So um, to kind of turn to law school unexpected, to go to Harvard Law School unexpected. When I first considered law school, I, I thought I would maybe just get, I'd be lucky if I could get into George Washington. Yeah. Um, but I think, I, I, I don't know, I think I met, I ended up when I was at Queens College, I actually met another student there. Mm -hmm. she kind of served as like a mentor to me. Oh. Um, because she, I knew her, she was like three years ahead of me. And she was doing the same kind of track as I was going to law school. And she, when I knew her, it was at the campaign school at Yale. And mm -hmm. At that time, she told me how she had gotten into Stanford and Harvard and a full ride at Columbia. 
And I think being able to meet a person who did that, who went through that, you know, and who was in her position, I think that kind of gave me the motivation to say, I can do that too. If she can do it and she's standing right in front of me, there's no reason why I can't. That's very exciting. And so what are you going to study? Tell me. I know, but so um, <laughs> I want to make this whole thing a big surprise. Well, um, at Harvard or at any law school, your first year are your foundational courses. Um, and after that, you're, it's kind of up to you what you do for the next two years. Um, so I personally, I'm interested in international law. Um, and as I've been asked many times in my, you know, law school interviews at this point, where do I see myself when I'm, when I'm done with law school? And really the most ideal situation for me, I could see myself as at a sort of intergovernmental organization type of thing. I could see myself maybe at the UN or at the World Trade Organization, at the ICC or ICJ. Um, and I think other things that I'm open to would be working more generally in government, so like working for the U.S. Uh, State Department or working for U.S. aid. Um, so I, I think that I really want to take the skills that I, that I learned from law school, and I want to bring that to more of the public service side of it. That, and a lot of that from your experience, it, the fact that you went into that internship program. Do you yeah. think Absolutely. I think I never I don't think I ever really had like the opportunity to understand what happens in a government office. And, you know, at the state level, you know, it's nowhere near as busy as if you're like, you know, working for, say, like Chuck Schumer. But um, you have so many different constituents coming in with all these different problems that are very, very, very real. Um, and it kind of like, one, it made me look at, I think, my own privilege and say like, wow, I, I'm, I'm not in these circumstances, but I have the capacity to help these people, you know? And, and being an intern, you do it in like the smallest of ways by just doing, you know, like check-in calls with people, so say during the coronavirus. Um, but uh, I think that like being able to work, especially within my community, I kind of started also like putting together the pieces of, how you know policy needs to go you know policy and uh, i think like community organizing they kind of need to happen like hand in hand you know one can't happen without the other you can't take care of a community if you don't know the community's needs exactly that's how you get many of your ideas for what you want to do but it's a very gratifying work isn't it I when think you're absolutely. able to help somebody and make their improve their lives I, I, there's been a few different people. I think one that sticks out to me the most um, was we had a constituent who was uh, set to be deported from the country to Pakistan. And he had been in the country for like 15 years. He came as a refugee. Um, he married an American woman and he had two American children who I think one wasn't even a year old. Um, and essentially when the, you know, current administration came down on, um, undocumented immigration, they gave him about two months and said, you got to get out. So, um, you know, that's definitely still more of a federal issue, but, you know, my, cause he's our constituent, my office had to get involved as well as, you know, like say, um, governor Cuomo's office. And one of the things I did to contribute to that was I wrote, um, the letter that would essentially would be us vouching for him and saying this person is a good character and this person belongs in this community and it would be incredibly immoral and wrong to remove them from here. Yeah. And anyhow, he ended up, they ended up pushing his, and this was right before Thanksgiving. This was like mm -hmm. two days before Thanksgiving when, when he was supposed to be deported. They told him, show up to court with your passport and your airline ticket and that's it, you know? And so anyhow, that day, they ended up extending his uh, deportation date to sometime in February. And then in February, they dropped it and he oh. essentially is now working through getting his like proper- That's so great. When you get deported, do you have to buy your own transportation? Yes. You, you serious? If, if you're being, if, I think as long as like, if you're not in one of those um, detention centers, yeah, you, you yeah. buy it. <laughs> It's, it's on you. incredible. So the feeling is, so uh, Professor 
uh, Maniscalco, <laughs> my friend Tony, uh, met you at a, a, a meeting, I think, of alumni. I don't know what the meeting was, but he is interested in establishing a relationship between students and the graduates and a mentorship kind of thing, right? Yes. And that captivated you. Yeah. You know? um, I have, you know, aside from the other many things I've been doing, um, since I was in college, I was mentoring. Um, I mentored for the uh, Queens College Now program, uh, which are high school students taking college credit courses at Queens. Mm -hmm. I mentored as a TA um, for the incoming freshmen um, mm -hmm. at Queens College. And there's even one who I'm still in touch with today as he's a junior and he's still trying to figure out what's, what's going on with him. <laughs> I mentored a girl who I tutored who she was in eighth grade and she was applying to different high schools. Um, and she needed, she, you know, her mom didn't know how to like, how to help her apply to the specialized high schools or private high schools, any of that. So I got her through the whole process of collecting her letters of reference and, mm -hmm. um, of getting the application filled out and getting her to take tests and everything. And she ended up, by the way, being the only student of her entire class mm -hmm. to get into the National Junior Honor Society because she was the only one with high enough grades. Right. So I, I, to me, I, I think mentorship is incredibly important. One, because I've not only done it, but two, because I've had so many really, I think, important mentors in my life. Like aside from just that one, you know, the other Queens College student who I told you about. Um, so, yeah. That's so great. You know, um, it's it's so interesting because it's so important and there's so many people who are left alone and the mentoring just helps you go from step to step but i assume that it's inside of you that's really propelled you onto these things what I, about your parents have they not mentored you i think of course they have i think my biggest mentor is my mother i think um you know she was an immigrant from the Dominican Republic, and she, in, in DR, she came from like, po like absolute poverty, like rural poverty. Mm. Um, and to see her get to the level of superintendent with the New York City Department of Ed, um, I think when you see someone who faces that much adversity, like it's it's almost hard not to listen to the advice that they give you and the guidance they give you. I wasn't going to apply to Harvard. And when I told my when I told my mom and my dad, they were like, "Are you have you lost it? You need to send in the application." Oh, good. And they were my very first acceptance letters. So. <laughs> That's great. So it's um, it's just uh, an amazing thing that you've come out of CUNY or you've come out of the high school and you've done all of these things. I can see why CUNY's so proud of you. But I want to go back just to one little thing. When you were asked at at Harvard when you, in an interview, what do you, where do you see yourself and what, how do you answer that? I mean, if you had been asked that in high school, where do you think you're going to go? What would you have said? I don't know. I maybe say I'm going to be a doctor, but I think by um, you know by the time I got to my Harvard interview, you know, I think that. One, how do I answer that? I answer it with my short term and my long term. Mm. Um, and I haven't told you my long term, but my long term would really be to set up some sort of organization that is similar to the many different scholarship programs available at CUNY, such as the ETR scholarship program, such as the Macaulay Honors College uh, program or the Sophie Davis program that essentially fully funds um, higher education for um, minorities and women, but more specifically for those who want to go into politics, international relations, uh, law, um, as well as uh, study abroad opportunities. Um, so that's the long term. But I think the way I think I have a better idea now just because I've had the academic and professional experience to kind of reassure me that the decisions I'm making at this point are the right ones for me. It's so exciting. So um, Professor, uh, my friend, <laughs> is he's perfectly right that you should be there and lead this, I hope, connect people so that they graduate with the same aspirations and success you have. And just thanks, I guess, to CUNY. It's a wonderful school, isn't it? I 
love CUNY. I love CUNY. I love Queens College. And I would recommend, and I do recommend to anyone and everyone who's looking into higher education, go to CUNY. CUNY is affordable. CUNY really cares about their students and they offer them the most, the most opportunities I've seen for students to excel. I love CUNY. And everyone that I know, all my friends who have gone there, all my queens, they love CUNY too. Well, you should be on a poster. Thank you so much, Arlene. Thank, Thank you so much for having me and letting lots, me speak. And lots of good luck. Thank you. Bye.